Hello fellow Vikings! After spending countless hours building a beautiful base, you really don't want to get it smacked apart by a couple of blue bullets. And the fact you're watching this video, I assume you already experienced that. In today's video, I'll be showing you some important techniques on how to protect your base from raids and enemies. So let's dive right in and make sure your base stands the test of time and attacks. <laughs> First things first, it is important to understand the various types of mobs and their combat abilities. Apart from flying mobs, which is a completely different challenge, the most destructive mob is the Lock Troll, as it has a large range and a heavy area of effect damage. While the regular troll does massive damage, its range is pretty much limited. Even when hurdling rocks, the damage is manageable. The Lock Troll, however, has a massive range. In my test I found their range to be about 8 meters maximum and taking down wooden structures in one fell swoop. This is very important information when building up your defenses. Now there are some other ranged mobs you should take into account which are archers, both skeleton and droggers, fueling shamans and the fueling spearmen. While they are not doing as much damage to structures, they do have a long range and can be more dangerous to yourself or any creatures you might have on your base. Now, protecting against flying mobs presents its own set of challenges, but don't worry, we'll get to these as well. One of the first defenses many players discover is the building of a moat. By digging a trench around your base of about 2 to 3 meters deep and 2 meters wide, you effectively block any mob on foot from entering or attacking your base. However, as we tested the range of our mobs, we should also make sure our buildings and structures were built that distance away from the outside of the moat. And while 8 meters might be enough for a lock troll, archers and fueling shamans will be more of an issue. So that means other defense methods might be a better choice. Apart from a moat, you might also want to build some easy access for yourself, depending on if you would like to cart in resources and so on. Still, building a bridge might then undo all the work you did with your moat. This is where a gapped bridge might come in handy. If you look on the internet, I'm sure you will find many different designs, but they all have one thing in common the gap that prevents mobs from pathfinding themselves over your bridge. An easy way to build that gap is by using a wooden door, as it allows you to shift snap points. Snapping a door on the floor here, then snapping another door against the first door, now allows you to place another floor here, but shift it in such a way a gap is created. Once you have crossed over to the other side, you can remove the doors and the floor, and a nice gap will be the result. That gap will prevent any mobs on foot from crossing over. But you can still easily cross it with a cart. Now apart from some mobs having larger ranges, not everyone likes the look of a moat as well. It also takes a lot of work when building large villages and such. And on surface it might be frowned upon because excessive terrain edits do cause some render problems. The second technique, one I do like to use myself, also uses terrain but differently. Instead of digging a moat, we built a wall made out of terrain. The advantage of terrain walls is that they are indestructible. Still, they do look ugly, so many avoid the use of it. However, in my projects, I prefer to hide the terrain walls in my stone walls. Even covering them with wood stakes and such makes it look pretty clean and safe. To be able to raise terrain, you do need a workbench. Once that is built, you can now raise terrain with the use of a hoe and stone. Each raise will cost you two stone. There are advanced techniques to be more economical with this, but they do take some time and I never made a video about it myself. However, if you want to learn more about terrain manipulation in Valheim, I have made a complete dedicated guide to that, and you will be able to find a link in the description. After raising the terrain a few meters, 3 meters is more than enough, you can start shaving away terrain from the sides until there is nothing left but a sharp wedge. The wedge is enough to keep the mobs out. On the outside of that wedge we can now build a wooden or stone wall and of course do the same on the inside. That way the terrain wall only serves as a backup when the decorative walls are destroyed, making sure no one can enter. You still need to build a gateway though, just to ensure personal access, so that will be your weak point. The advantage of these terrain walls is that you now can add some extra defenses against certain flying mobs, for example dead skeetos or bats. By building a terrain wall high enough, for example, you can place spikes on it that poke through the corner of the wall. 
bats and the skittles trail along the wall until they bat find themselves at the edge where the spikes are awaiting them, which kill them almost instantly. Now, the bats do really cause your spikes to break down quickly, so you will have to do a lot of repair work and rebuilding after each cauldron raid. Another much used method to protect the base is the use of an inverted stair. By placing a staircase directed outwards and surrounding your base with it, you confuse the enemy AI from understanding the setup. As long you're not close by or one of your farm animals is nearby, they will just stand there. But when they feel they can reach you, they will try to attack you and in the process damage the stair along with it. You can clearly see the difference in how the AI reacts when I'm standing in a walled area compared with me standing in an area surrounded with stairs. I like to use this technique in combination with my stone walls as I can merge them halfway into the stone. First of all, they do not see me inside the wall so they will not try to attack me or the stairs. And secondly, the stairs also are a buffer that protects my walls when they decide to attack them. Above those, then I build a stone stair to just make it look better. And what's even better is to place spikes right underneath the wooden stairs just having the tips poking out. That will cause any mob to be damaged and killed when they are straying too close to it. It's a perfect combo. Since the Mistlands update, we do have another defense added to our arsenal, which is the Ballista. The Ballista is a great choice for base defense, but as it only unlocks after entering the Mistlands, it is a very late game option. Apart from that, it's more maintenance heavy as you need to put in the time to build ammo and reload them. And remember that they can be fragile, so don't leave them exposed. Ballistae are best used in combination with other methods and ideally placed inside or on top of fortified walls for protection. Now, without a doubt, the best way to protect your base is by preventing enemy spawns from happening in the first place. There are several buildable items that can prevent spawns from occurring, providing the ultimate base protection. Here is a list of all these building items. Each of these has the same protective radius, and if you would like to see what that is, just build a workbench and it will visually show you. Now, building workbenches all around the area might do the job, but man does it look ugly, and the fact that mobs still go straight for them when spotted slowly reduces that protected area. But there are ways to build certain structures that are preventing spawns and also avoid mobs attacking them. Some people just build workbenches in the ground and cover them, or build little shacks around them, but there are better techniques that also take less work. Now we still use workbenches to lay out the perimeter, but once we know where to build everything, we replace those workbenches with something better. One technique is building campfires, then using a hoe to cover them up with terrain. That will extinguish the flame, but the campfire still serves as a spawn preventer. Now, this can be finicky, as sometimes campfires tend to break when covered by too much terrain, or when, for example, a server does a restart. Another method is by using wards, which can be built into the air. By building up two or four meter wood poles, then build a ward on top of that, and then afterwards deleting those wood poles, you will notice the wards just keep floating. These do not need to be activated at all to serve as a spawn prevention. Now, I did notice that archers do attack floating wards, that means after a while they will break down. And to be honest, the floating wards are still a bit of an eyesore. Now, the technique I like to use is by merging two build parts together. One part will serve as a spawn prevention and the other will serve as a concealer to hide the first part. A torch is one of the easiest parts to build, and when covering it up with a stone block or a wooden pole, you can perfectly protect a whole area without too much hassle. Now, the same as campfires and wards, the torch does not need to work to act as a spawn preventer. Still, it is a nice little decorative piece that makes the area also look good when lit up. Spawn prevention is by far the safest technique to defend your base and also serves against flying raids or mobs, well, any raids or mobs. In a lot of my builds you will notice I'm using a combination or even all of them because it just can look nice when you use them. And you know what, it's better to have a few buffers to make sure that if anything happens you have more than one defense against attacks. And there you have it folks, with these techniques in hand you're well equipped to defend your Valheim base from the most dreaded enemies. Remember, plan ahead and combine these strategies for maximum effectiveness. Now don't forget to like and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I love to hear about your base defenses or any tips and tricks you've discovered on your own. And I will see you next time. Happy building.
Bebelbum out. <laughs>